Hey everybody, thanks for being patient. Welcome to Woodworking Wisdom. My name's Colwyn Way. Um, a few of the uh, streaming bugs in the uh, system, I'm afraid. Thank you ever so much, like I've just said, for being as patient as you have been. It's now 20 past three. Um, my apologies for Lazarus and people in Australia and people like that. We're keeping you up. I, I do apologize. But we're going to go through um, the next 45 minutes to an hour, hopefully, with some interesting things. I'm very excited. I'm going to introduce you to uh, a new range from us or for us. Um, and it's the Nick Agar uh, Chromacraft range of finishing and embellishing um, uh, uh, finishes um, and stencils and all those sorts of things. I'm just going to check with Ben. Ben's behind the cameras. He's doing the switching and the, and the questions for us today. Ben, is everything okay? Have we got a thumbs up? Can people hear me, see me yeah. and all that sort of thing? Excellent. Yeah, okay. I think we're good. Um, everything seems to be um, working. Well. Working all right, if yeah. not a little bit late. Okay, right. We're going to go over to the bench straight away. We are going to do a little bit of turning, um, but I just want to show you what I'm talking about when I say Chromacraft. Um, I'll explain a little bit about Nick Agar, who he is, and uh, his relationship with us and, uh, as Axminster and myself. Uh, and then we're going to do a few um, bits of arty bits. All right. So over to the bench. Right then, so to start off with, um, Chromacraft. Chromacraft is a company in the States. We're really excited um, as a company to get uh, these guys in and to be uh, build a relationship with them. They are um, primarily uh, a finishes company. So what we're looking at here is a range of what we're doing for them. So um, things like stencils, and I've got two types of stencils here. We've got infill stencils and we've got peel-off stencils. Now I'm going to play with a few of those in a minute to show you exactly what that's all about. And also, in a fortnight's time, we're going to do a project um, and decorate using those stencils, the airbrush, and the wood stains from Chromacraft as well. And some really, really nice colors, which I'm going to again demonstrate for you in a minute. Just, just a little micro demonstration. But in a fortnight's time, do a little bit more. Um, so we've got our, our stencils here. We've got, um, if you were looking or watching last week, Frederick was asking a question about um, reactive paints. So we've got a good range of reactive paints here. We've got the primers and then the actual uh, metallic paints and then reactive um, solutions. So we've got a copper and bronze reactive solution and then a rust um, solution here. Um, and then we've got things really, really interesting, things like um, uh, uh, stain or wood dye uh, pens. Incredibly interesting for me in particular. And Ben, I know that because for the more artistic pieces, these are really good to get in those. Just those little areas which you can't get with an airbrush or with um, sort of dabbing dye on or brushing dye on normally. Um, and then one of the, the really uh, useful um, products to, to use in conjunction with the Rustina, so the metallic paints, will be the Chroma Gilts. Um, they're very, very different from any other gilding um, paste or waxes that you've used. These are very different. These dry very quickly um, and, and are, are far easier to use, I found. Um, so that's the sort of things we're going to be looking at. There are lots of other things in the range that we're going to be doing including sealers um, and including the range of dyes. Um, there's going to be, um, like I say, the Rustinas, all sorts of, of, of stencils. The, the range is due in imminently, so it's any minute now. You're going to see me and Ben doing a lot more um, with all of these things. And I just want to explain a little bit. Nick Agar's name is on the front of, this, uh, of all of these products. Now, Nick Agar, if you've never heard of Nick Agar, again, it's do um, search him. Um, he's he's uh, one of the best wood turners I know. Happens to be one of my closest friends and a massive friend to the company. Has been for well over 20 years now. Um, so he's got a real close link. He is uh, living in the States and he's there working with Chromacraft to develop these colors and these, um, these finishing um, uh, materials. So just very quickly, if we go on that slightly closer um, camera, Ben, I just want to show you where, where I'm talking about reactive paints. Now, that, um, I did see a few of the comments as we were going through our bugs about our painted spanner. So a wooden spanner just painted to look rusty and metally there. And um, that was with the Road Rash primer. And I'll explain about Road Rash um, as a primer. This is um, our rust effect. So to get this, we um, first of all paint on the road rash, which has got little bits of grit in it. 
Um, and you can add sand and things like that to help give you the texture of rust. Um, then it's got the gray, pro, the gray metallic paint or the steel metallic paint, and then activated by the the spray or the spritz. And then we've got another two here. So what we have the copper uh, metallic paint and the bronze metallic paint. And I wanted to show you how the pro, uh, how the activator works differently on the two. You get a much um, brighter. Um, a sort of verdigris on this one uh, than you do on the bronze. And I quite like that. It, it gives you a completely different look on the two pieces. Um, ben, can we just go through some of these stills a minute? I've got a range of stills here, guys, where you would um, use these metallic paints and the activators just to, to show um, the type of thing. Now, I'm, I'm not going to um, hide behind the fact that the first three stills um, I've taken from um, from Nick Agar. This is um, heavily influenced by some of the pieces he's done to show this off. Um, so he won't mind me saying that or doing it. Um, but this is uh, this has got the copper effect on the main, was so the verdigris, then activated over the copper, and then a thin band of rust, so the iron with the um, the rust. That's a closer look at that. You see the sort of textures, which can be then highlighted with the chroma gilts. You can see how good that rust effect, is, especially in the next one there. You see, see very, very realistic. From then on, we went on to um, developing just a couple of other shapes. So this, again, is the copper um, with the spritz over the top, so the activator over the top, and then a little bit of the bronzing chroma gilt, just to highlight some of the, 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 the higher areas. But that's just, you know, you, it's just been um, dredged up from the North Sea from an old galleon that has been uh, been sunk. That's what we're trying to look like. And then moving on to some of my pieces um, or my robots. You've seen these um, a couple of weeks ago, I think it was. So again, looking at the sort of effects, the, the, the bronzing that I was trying to achieve here, making it look like a piece of bronze, and then spraying over to activate that, uh, that metallic paint to give it the verdigris effect. And then lastly, this is a robot you will see fairly shortly. I'm going to put that out there soon. This is one. This was literally a, um, a figure made just to show and to play with chromacraft. So we've got a little bit of rust going on, but we've also got some verdigris and um, picking out some of the the worn areas, or what's supposed to be worn areas, with chroma gilt uh, Viking silver. Okay, so there we are. So that's some of the things um, that you've got to look forward to, and some of the things that you can put into your turning. We know we can turn a bowl. We know we can sand. Um, finish it if it's a beautiful piece of timber absolutely but if we want to um, experiment with other finishes and other embellishing um, solutions then you know there's no better way to start this is a fantastic probably what well, it is the best um, embellishing um, materials that i've ever used got a quick question here first from ben before we move on to anything else yes ben um so a question for frederick um, he's asking, does the verdigris rub off? Um, and thanks for your advice earlier. We'll give it a go. No problem, Frederick. Yes. So the rust, the verdigris, the rust will come off more than the verdigris if you don't seal it. So it's really quite important to seal it. So we're bringing in again from Chromacraft a, a material called WRU. Uh, RU20. Um, that's a sealer. It's a urethane sealer. So water-based sealer that goes over the top very thinly. Um, to lock that in and to stop it from um, to coming off and also holds the color as well so it doesn't wash it off and that, that was a conversation we were having last week um, Frederick um, about it washing or dulling the color down it doesn't do that um, any urethane um, sealer would do the same job if I'm honest with you um, I've also used chestnut uh, acrylic lacquer over the top and that's been good I would go with satin though not gloss you don't want to gloss over a metal effect it just doesn't look quite right so go with the satin if you're going to do that but the urethane the WRU20 is, is for me is the, the one that works the best all right and those robots incidentally were were um, sealed with that uh, with that sealer okay any questions just for the minute no we're all good so those are some of um, oh, in fact, let's just show you one of these little uh, mood boards that um, that I've done, just just to demonstrate the sort of thing, the sort of you know patterning and the sort of mixture of effects that you can get. It's just something I carry around on staff training um, when I'm demonstrating this product at all. It's just something to have. I think it was Ben that done the carving, and then we just use the different metal metal effects on it, and reactive paints. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of painting, a little bit of airbrushing first. 
So what I want to do is use the stencils. So we're going to use the infill stencils um, and the peel-off stencils just to do a simple butterfly um, and so show you how easy it, it is to use. We're going to do a lot more with airbrushing over the next few weeks, a lot more with Chromacraft over the next few weeks because I find it a really um, easy thing to pick up and play with and for embellishing and adding to your wood turn pieces. And it can be subtle pieces, you know, just one thing. It doesn't have to be a whole heap of um, of decorating. You can just have a little... A little picture and that's fine so we're just going to play with one of the butterflies first and i want to show you what's in the pack for the stencils i've said this is imminent it's in the country i'm just waiting for it to get here um and as soon as it does we will let you know because i'm going to be harping on about this over the next few weeks so uh so you're going to watch this space um, so there we are, a piece of paper. So let me show you what the stencils are. So I'm picking on a particular butterfly, and this one is, this is the swallowtail butterfly. So if we go to here, so what we have, first of all, the peel-off stencils. These are the peel-off stencils. And basically, you get a negative and a positive Im image. You can see the one I've used here. So you get the, the outside or the outline, or you get the, the actual, um, the negative, the inside image. Now, that's going to be our base. Okay, that's going to be a base. We're going to put that on there afterwards. Then to decorate, we have the inner bits, the details. So again, you've got an outside shape. You've got all the inner details, including the body. So I'm just going to do one of these and then show you um, afterwards what you can do with a little bit more time. This is the, the sort of thing we are going to be doing on a bowl as well in a couple of weeks' time for you, just to show you how you can decorate a platter, that sort of thing. So let's start off. I'm going to use a nice, fresh... Um, stencil um, or the sticker. So we're going to go with this outside one here, and I'm just going to pop it on this one, this white piece of paper. Um, before I've used proper airbrushing paper, it just you get a, a really nice effect from airbrush paper. This is just a bit of printer paper, um, and my nerves where we couldn't go live earlier, I've gone and chewed all my fingernails down, so I'm struggling to get this off. Um, here we go. Just a little bit careful because you can use these time and time and time again. Just be careful as you take the markers. There's some delicate areas. And then we're just going to plonk it right in the middle. Try and get it as flat as possible. There we are. I'm just going to seal those edges. Now, normally, normally, what I would do is now mask off around here. I'm not going to bother. So when we reveal this in a minute, there will be a little bit of a square around it. Um, I'm not going to bother today because I'll show you um, a, a completely finished one later. But that's what we do. So that's the the image of our butterfly. What we'll do first, we'll do a block coat of a color. And I'm going to go nice and uh, nice and blue. We'll go teal on there. And then we'll fill in the detail. Yes, Ben, another question. Um, so uh, Chris is asking, is it the same as peel off rice? I, you got me there. <laughs> You got me. I don't know. I don't know. Sure. And then Maria did ask, um, can they be used again? Yep. Yep. So you can see on this one, I've used this one several times, this one here. Um, they stick back on. Um, we'll use this one over and over again. How many times? I don't know because I haven't gone to the, the, the whole length of um, uh, the lifespan of one yet. So I'm not quite sure. But pop that to one side. So well, first of all, like I said, we're just going to put a block color so i'll go teal and i've got my little airbrush compressor down there i'm going to use a little sp50 with a little bit of teal in now this is not a demonstration on using an airbrush i'm going to do that plenty of times i've also done lots of them for you as well but we're using this is um, uh, a suction feed so air coming across the top sucking all the all the ink out so air coming this way sucking that ink out so we'll go over just with a little bit of the teal. And then I'm going to put some other colors in. There we are. Now, what I'm also going to do, I'm going to think about when we put that detail in. I'm going to darken the center because I will make that a, a black right in the center. But what I want to do is a nice dark blue just so it fades out nicely. So start thinking immediately about just getting a, a mixture of tones in there. So there's our base color now we're going to look at the infill stencil now the infill stencil fits perfectly to the the shape that you've you've created and there's all sorts of different um variants here so you can see we've got this one here we've got another variant here so that would go 
on there, for instance, or I've got another variant here. There's all sorts. There's also um, obviously a mixture of different sizes depending on the butterfly you want to make. Let's get it where you can see it. All right, so lots and lots of different sizes. So now we're going to go, what color should we do? If we go, we'll do a black over that next. So just to give some detail. So black, 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 there it is. And um, incidentally, this is the Chromacraft wood dyes. So we're keeping the colors matched. So just going to line that up. And then just keep the, the template down by pressing air or pushing air over the top. It's up to you how much you want to do. Don't go too heavy at the stage. There we are. We've got a nice little bit of detail. We'll bring this close to the camera as well when we finish. Same thing on the other wing. And there we are. Now we go a different color. Let's go with a nice, a nice coral red. You got to think, you know, you've done, you do your primary wheels at school where you mixed colors over each other. Just think about that when you're putting these colors on, you know, not, it's not all going to work. Um, let's go. There's a couple of stripes. Where should we go? Let's use, let's use that one. So this is not like any um, any butterfly, I know, but it's fun just playing around, coming up with your own patterns. That's quite nice there. Okay, so what we'll do next, let's pop that one out the way. We're going to peel off our stencil. Oh, yes, Ben, whilst I'm doing this, I'll ask me the question. Um, so I've got a couple of questions here. Um, the pilaf rice <laughs> was a joke, <laughs> which we both missed. Um, so we've got something here um, from Woodwork Learner. Can the stencil stick to wood? Yes. Yeah, we're, again, Woodwork Learner, we're going to do that next week. Uh, sorry, the week after next. Um, we're going to um, decorate a, the rim of a, a nice pale sycamore platter. And, um, and Michael's asking, can you clean the stencils off? Um, and if you can, what would you use? Um, uh, methylated spirits. Yes, and methylated spirits. And then Maria's asking, will the paint bleed on some woods? Um, yes, they can. Um, so you know the ones that they'll bleed on. They're going to be the ones... They're going to be the very porous ones. So you could put a, a very thin coat of sealer on, then sand it back, and that will definitely help. Um, but pick your woods wisely when it comes to do, do, doing this sort of thing. Sycamores, maples are really good because they're pale. They don't have a background color. So it's gonna, you, your color you put on is going to you know, stay true. And we've got a couple more if we're, if we're okay to keep going. Yeah, go for it. So Frederick's asked, um, do you have to thin the paint, and can any size needle be used? Yeah, no problem with needle size. No, you don't have to thin the paint because this is actually a dye. So it's a wood dye, like a stain. So it's nice and thin, ready to use. And then from Jenny, she's asking, are you using a different airbrush for each color? I'm using a different airbrush for each color. There we are, Jenny. Um, it's just the way I work. I do a lot of airbrushing and um, cleaning the airbrush every time I want to use it will be a bit of a pain. You could get away with it if you use a gravity-fed airbrush. A couple of drops in, do your color, a little bit of cleaner, spray it out into a, a capture jar, and then do the next color. That works, but I find it just easier, quicker for me, because I'm doing lots and lots of it, demonstrating especially to have a color in each one. All right. Okay, so look, what I've done there, I've used the, um, the border to get the, the infill color. Now I've blocked the whole thing out. I'm just going to put a little bit of background in. OK, so let's go something completely different. Let's go. Let's go. What should we go, Ben? Let's go yellow. We'll have a hazy yellow background. So I'll just do a broad, a broad background. Nothing too deep, nothing too colorful. 
you can see what I'm talking about, why you would need to mask off that box that I've got there from the, uh, from the template. But that's normal. You have to do that. There we are. Now, normally, I would use a little, a little craft knife to do this, but I'm going to use the re remnants of my fingernails to try and just peel this bit away. The craft knife is better because you won't damage anything. Yes, Ben, ask away. Okay, so uh, Paul would like to know what airbrush you're using. Paul, I'm using the SP50 airbrush. SP50, which is actually um, a, a suction feed airbrush, one of my favourites from Spraycraft. And then Maria is asking, um, do we know the rough cost of the stencils um, when we'll get them? Um at the moment, I don't, Maria. I'm going to do lots of demonstrations where we put up the links and I will give you those costs, yes. Uh, at the moment, I don't. Um, we haven't taken our pictures of them yet or anything like that. So I would say within, well, in the fortnight that I'm going to take to do the next demonstration, we'll have all that information for you, okay? You can order at the moment because we haven't got them on the web or anything like that. We haven't got them in stock, but in a fortnight's time, everything being crossed, we are, we're going to have them here ready for you to snap up. Yes, Ben. And then Fuller would like to know, are methylated spirits, is that the same as methanol? I don't know. There's a lot of clever people watching this that will answer that for me. Um, I don't think so. But uh, let, what body should we? Let's do a brown body only because it's different. So we go brown and we've got antenna to do as well. So we're going to go now with the body over the top. And I want a fairly heavy color here. I think we may have to go a little bit of black over the top of that. Oh, no, that's okay. I'm quite happy with that. Might pick it out. Let's haze that up a little bit with some gray freehand. What I'm doing here, I'm just sort of adding a little bit of tone just to give a little bit of depth to the to the piece. Now, that, that's all I'm going to do to that one, but how quick? You know, how quick is that? It, it, it builds up really, really quick. That's what I like about airbrushing. So I'm going to hold in a minute. I'm going to hold this up to the camera so you can see. But we're going to transfer these on to some of our turn pieces in the next few weeks, like I say. But let's go to that closer camera a minute, Ben. You can way, way there. You can see the sort of sort of um, detail we can get. However, spend a bit of time at it. It's one that we prepared earlier. So this is one that took me probably about an hour's worth of work. Um, and that's just a mixture. We've got the red leaf maple. We've got a, a couple of the butterflies. There are a couple of different design of butterflies available as well and a couple of um, different leaf as well as other things. Forest shadows. You can see here that the in-between is done with a texture. That's part of the forest shadow um, range. Um, and it's just fun to play with. Let me just get a couple of these guys out just to show you um, because I'm so excited about it. You can probably tell how excited I am about it. But... Um, there we are. So what we got here, this is our swallowtail that we're using. We've got the sugar maple. This is a lovely leaf, the sugar maple. i get the light away from it. Um, some branches and some lightning effects almost. Some more forest shadow there. So, yeah, there's lots and lots of things for you to play with. And thinking as that, that festive period is coming close, all those things that you can, um, all those projects that you might be able to make for, for your loved ones. We're going to go to the lathe now. I'm just going to use a little bit of that chroma gilt and, again, a little bit more of the, the, um, the airbrushing just to give you an idea of how we can text. We use a decorating elf on that. So let's just swap ourselves around. And up back to the lathe. Okay, so what I've got here, is we've just got... Um, the, the OD 112s, and I've just got a small piece of, of tulip. Again, it's a fairly pale timber. 
this bit has got some green in it, which are, which doesn't really matter for this little project because all I want to do here, we're going to make a little button shape. We're going to um, spray it black after texturing it, and then we're just going to pick out some of that texture um, with the uh, the chroma gilt. I just realized I've forgotten my chroma gilt. It's just on the table to bear with me. Um, and Ben's just going to pass me one of those latex gloves from the top of the, the cabinet. So I want to get a Viking... A vi well, in fact, let's get a few Viking silver, antique brass, and a verdigris. Thank you. So first of all, let's get this turned and a little bit of abrasive on there. So we know what we're doing when we start the lathe, hopefully. So I'm going to go, let's go straight in with a very small... Um, bowl gouge, I want to say, but instead of a bowl gouge, because I can't find one, we go fairly lumpy. Now we're going to go spindle gouge. Nice, relatively high speed. And all I want to do is just do a little dome. These are great as little button shapes. I've recently done, which you'll see pictures of in the next few weeks, um, a series of Viking uh, German smoker figures. Um, you will see those. And I use this technique to make the steel center pieces to their shields, um, which was quite a fun a fun task. But look, all we're going to do now, we've done that. We're just going to a very, very quick blitz of 240 grit abrasive. I don't want to, I've got no extractor here in front of me today. So we're just going to quickly do that. And now we're going to use the decorating elf. In fact, before I do that, let me just create a little concave with a, a little round nose scraper. And then that decorating elf a seat neatly in there. There we are. Okay, decorating elf. If you've never seen one of these, this is what they are. They're basically, this is a rotating tool. Okay, it's got a little um, serrated, uh, in this case, round or domed um, cutter. Um, but you can get a, a triangular shape and you can also get a barrel shape as well. Um, and basically all we're going to do is hold this against... Let it cut. Same with that little center one. There we are. I'm running at 1600 revs there, but anything from about 1000 upwards works on this. If I stop the lathe, just to show you what we've got at the moment, you can't see a huge amount, to be quite honest, because it's only on the timber. It's quite an attractive finish. You get like lots and lots of ser serrations. What I need to do now, though, is to pick that, uh, or to help the, the chroma gilts in a minute, is pick that out and, and um, paint it black. Black is going to give us a metal effect. And if you were watching last week when I'd done the fantasy figures, um, the shield and the helmet was all done black, and then the chroma gilt over the top. Yes, Ben, question. Um, so Martin's asking, is it food safe? Is it food safe? The 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 gilts? No, yeah, none none of it's food safe. It's all water based, but it's not um, it's not fit for potentially coming into contact with the mouth. No, so no good for salad bowls or anything like that. This is a decorative finish. It needs to be sealed in um, and not not ingested. All right, so no, not in this case. Don't eat it. Right, so we're going to cover that in black, and you can do you can do several things to blacken this. You can use um, ebonizing wax. You can use the dyes if you had a little bit of time. Um, you could use the ebonizing lacquers, but those have to dry. This is instant, you see. So this is the reason that I'm going with my airbrush. This will dry instantaneously, pretty much as soon as it lands. It will be dry. 
And if you're unsure, then get yourself a craft dryer, uh, sorry, a craft dryer, and, um, and use one of those to help dry the piece off. Let me just turn off my compressor because I don't need that anymore. Get yourself a little craft dryer. Craft dryers look like um, hair dryers, but they're, they're miniature hair dryers, basically. Um, and you just, you can dry it nice and quickly like that. Hopefully all my waffling, though, um, has let that dry for me. So there you are. You see you've got a nice black finish. Now, what we're going to use is a, you need a pair of gloves on this because if you use your fingers, they will get covered in the in the crema gilt. So a pair of gloves. Now, Nick has always, always said to me, Get yourself a, a packet of milkers. And milkers are gloves which have um, texture on the finger and thumb for milking. Um, and um, so I go to our normal farm supplies and buy milkers. They're brilliant. Um, and it's a little bit of texture, a little bit of feeling in the fingers. Because the way you use this, you're going to put a little bit, and, and I'm, when I say a little bit, I mean a little bit of this chroma gilt on your thumb and slowly rub it into your finger. Otherwise, you'll just lather the stuff on and all that detail will be completely covered up. So a little tiny bit. The pigment concentration in this is massive. So you get a huge amount for your money. So I'm going to put a little bit on and then just rub it between your finger and thumb. All right, just a little bit there. And then we're going to turn the lace feed down and just start literally to let it pick the high spots. And I'm going to stop it just there, just for the just for the initial in, um, inspection. You can see we're slowly building color up. Don't put too much on too quickly, otherwise, like I say, you'll just cover everything up. Rather than pick detail out, you'll you'll um, you'll cover it. So I only want a little bit on my finger. Oh, that's what we want to get that nice detail coming through so i'm going to take my glove off we're going to get that a little bit closer for you closer to the camera let's go i'm going to come on over to the the um the table again we're going to show you that on the other overhead camera so over to the table because this has got a nice focus on we can see so that's what we're doing we're picking out those high spots we're exposing all that lovely texture and you can really have fun with that now i've used the viking silver but you got the antique bronze you got the verdigris you got loads and loads of color you got some really lovely pearlescent blues and, and, and greens and golds so there's an awful lot you can do there yes ben another question um, so a question from frederick um if you put too much on can it be wiped off easily no no once you put too much on it's back to square one you have to take it off or turn it off um it's very difficult to rub out so um you'll have to sand it back respray and then go again so little and often just a tiniest little amount all right okay so there we've co we've covered quite a few things actually there that today it's probably quite confusing um but like i say over the next few weeks we're going to look at a lot more in detail take one of the particular um, products and use it and see um, what we can achieve with it okay so just before we go any questions for the moment ben um i think this maria's Sorry, Maria's asking, um, I think, about the the um, the stains. Um, can it be put on with uh, without an airbrush, so with a cloth or a sponge? Or Absolutely. So use it like any normal wood stain. That's basically what it is. Um, it's, it's to be used in, for, in the same way you would use a normal dye, a stain, that sort of thing. Um, I like using them for airbrush because um, if you apply things with um, rag, uh, or brush even, you get quite a concentrated amount soak into the timber. I like the, the airbrush delivers a nice um, uh, small amount at a time. And if you keep spraying over the same spot, allowing it to dry each time, you'll slowly build the depth up. Um, you don't get that choice when you put on with a brush or a rag or anything. That's why I like the airbrush so much. 
And Simon's asking, um, does the gilt finish need a sealer on top of it? Yeah, same sealer. I'll go with the WRU20 um, or the acrylic lacquer, things like that. And this particular one that they recommend for it is the urethane finish, so water-based finish, and that seals it all in. Um, but you'll find that that will dry really, really quickly. Um, we're talking probably within the half hour that'll be you know, dry enough to, um, to be touch dry. So it's a, a rapid um, drying time. Um, unlike a lot of other gilding uh, waxes out there, which it is not. Yes. But no one? Uh, well, Bill's just got a question. Um, why do you use a, a Schoberg bench rather than the Axminster one? We've got a mixture of benches all over. I've got a mixture of Axminster, Schobergs. It's what we can pilfer because there's five rooms here. We've got a lot of uh, a lot of kit to get. So it's just one of our old benches. Yeah. And then Paul's asking, what was, could you remind him what the tool was that made the serrations? Decorating Elf. Decorating Elf. Um, Axminster, if you're there, um, could you put the link up to Decorating Elf, please? And then um, from Woodwork Learner, uh, will they work over, um, work over the top of sanding sealers? Um, nothing works. Well, in which, which ones? The dies? Um, it doesn't say, but I guess it's the gilt. The gilts will. Dyes don't. Um, dyes need to penetrate the timber. I've tried this with lots of makes of, of, of stain or dye, um, and what you get is a lot of beading, a lot of bead forming, and even when you think the dye is dry, it wipes off. So I would go with an out-sanding sealer. If you're trying to get an unbroken line, let's say, for instance, you want to dye the outside of a bowl, but you want the inside to stay nice and clean, I would tend to um, put a sanding sealer um, on the inside before you then um, put your dye on the outside. That sort of acts as a barrier. It stops it from bleeding through half as much. So that would be the, 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 the you know a good use of it. But no, the gilts, yes, they all go over the top, um, but uh, not the rest, no. All right, all good. Right, before I go, because we've done a lot of talking there, before I go, I want a little bit more talking. We're just going to highlight again what's happening um, this week, or sorry, next week. And the reason myself and Jason aren't going to be here, I've spoken to you about it the previous two uh, streams we've done. Myself and Jason are going to be up at Wizardry and Wood up in London. And we're going to be there from pretty much the whole week, from Monday all the way to um, to the Saturday. The actual Wood Wizardry and Wood exhibition um, is open from the Wednesday until the Saturday, though. If you are anywhere near London, if you can get to London, it's one of those shows that shouldn't be missed. It's got uh, it's got a couple of demonstrations, but it's got it's primarily an exhibition of wood turning um, in the UK. Uh, Fourteen um, wood turners there, um, like I say, including myself and Jason. We'd love to see you if you were in the in the area. Tickets, I believe, are eleven pounds. I'm going to get shot for not knowing ticket prices now. But um, go to the website, Wizardry and Wood, and you'll see all the information about uh, about ticket sales be um, available through Eventbrite um, or on the day. So, yeah, I'd love to see you. So that's next week. So Ben and um, Craig are going to be holding the fort next week, but then we'll be back again the weekend after. So thanks for stopping by, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed just a little introduction to Chromacraft there. Um, look out for a lot more coming soon, though. Thank you very much, and see you again next time. Bye-bye.